Today on Toy Shoes, we're getting real before we head off to the afterlife. Let's talk toys. Welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another Retro Shiz look back at the past, and today we're heading all the way back to 1986 for the Kenner Real Ghostbusters Wave 2 featuring six awesome ghosts dealing with ectoplasm, water, eye bugging, skeletons, whatever, it doesn't matter because they were all on the back of these cards, that's how you found out about all the old Kenner Ghostbuster figures, or at least I tried to i don't know what happened i also like this kenner ghost zapper that was a lot of fun but all of these are originals and like i was hinting at these are my original figures and some of them i got much later in life because for whatever reason i didn't even know they were a thing so this is going to be a neutrona blast sit back relax grab yourself a nice hot cup of ectoplasm this is a look back at the 1986 the real ghostbusters action figures wave 2 by kenner so to start it off right, we'll kick things off with the Banshee Bomber. One giant ghost. This thing is amazing. From the sculpted details, to the wings, to the tail, to that face. I love the stickered eyes. Thank God the eyes are still there, right? But he's got this giant mouth and nose. Sculpted details for days. He's got some pretty sturdy feet as long as you get him at the right angle. Big teeth. And on the back side is a button which you move up and down. And he's got his little wing action, right? He can fly in and harass the Ghostbusters, push the button going the other way, and it would have released the jaw. And the whole idea was to fill this ghost up with slime, ectoplasm, and fly it over the Ghostbusters, and then drop it, instantly sliming them, right? Which actually is a pretty cool gimmick for a toy, and carpets, probably not so much, but you get the idea, right? But I'm just amazed at how big this ghost was. I don't remember this ghost as a kid, this was one of those ones that got away from me, never saw it, friends never had it, but I can't recommend it enough. This is a fantastic addition to your real Ghostbusters collection. And flipping through the pages of Tobin's Spirit Guide, that giant yellow mass in front of you, well, he's labeled Sludge Bucket, and this is one giant yellow ghost, and he is a ton of fun. It's just a house for slime, basically. A lot of slime fun, but I love the open mouth, his teeth, his tongue, all the detail all over it. And you could put Ghostbusters and slime in his mouth, and he's a bit Slimer-esque from the top side down, right? Especially with the teeth. But yeah, I love the way you can rotate the tongue. It's like he's licking his lips and his teeth. He's got some really awesome teeth and gums to him. The hands, the legs, the big old squishy tail, which activates the slime so the whole gimmick was that you fill his mouth with slime and right there you have the little air hole and as you pump the tail it blows a big slime bubble or slimes up your ghostbusters because all the ghostbusters yeah you can put them right in sludge bucket's mouth and that yeah, was a lot of fun back in the day it really did the trick and you can move the tongue around and yeah, that was a heck of a lot of fun. Unlike the Banshee Bomber, I can tell you right now, this is one of those where the neighborhood kids had this guy, and I never got him underneath my Christmas tree. But I can tell you now, he's sitting pretty on my shelf, and I recommend you getting one as well. And our next Gooper ghost on the list, in case you haven't noticed a trend so far, is Squisher. He's another one of those slime ghosts. Get a big bucket of ectoplasm, fill him up, and squish him down, and... Slime would just run out of his nose and ruin a couple couches, right, on the way out. <laughs> but I really like the detail on this guy in particular. He does have some articulation in the arms, and the best part is, is that his jaw would move up and down, very terrifyingly, right, as I would say. But then you go and you pull the top part off, and you have this plunger-ish type thing, fill it with ectoplasm, slam it down, and the slime and everything would come out of his nose and cover whichever Ghostbuster you had in his mouth. And just to show you the scale on this guy, I mean, he's a very large ghost. One that is very awesome, very orange, and a must-have for your Kenner shelf. And moving from slime to now water, we have the H2 ghost, or as I've actually called him for years and years, the H2O ghost. Didn't know there wasn't an O in that, right? But this is another one of those ghosts where it's just creepy looking. Once you really look at all the details, it's basically little fingers with fingernails as the top part of the ghost, but you got all little creases and boils and everything else that 
surround his big ghostly blue head. But the best part is you take him apart and there's a secret little ghost inside, which really enable two water guns, basically. They're both very squishy, very detailed, but I like how this one's holding his mouth open, and inside, you get to see all the details, and the teeth, and the tongue, and everything else, and on the backside, very minimal detail. On the underside, though, you get to see 1984, Columbia Pictures, all that jazz, so that's really cool, but the squishiness is fun, and the water would squirt right out of the middle of his eye, which is a nice place. And you get the top part going, which squeezes water out of his nose, and combine them back together. And as far as scaling goes, yeah, he was about the size of a Kenner real Ghostbusters figure, and I like that even if you didn't want to deal with water, you could still break them apart and have some fun with them in some way, but in either sense, it's a must for the H2 Ghost. And next up, we have the baddest and the raddest bad to the bone ghost, and yes, it's basically a very terrifying looking skeleton. I don't know, even as a kid, the eyes, something about it, the teeth and everything else just freaked me out. It still does. It's it's a weird body type for a skeleton. I don't know. I think it's the perfect kind of creepy horror figure, but he's got this really long cranium and you pull down on the teeth and the mouth right there and his eyes bug out and yeah, it was just weird, but it was a cool kind of weird and that was what was so appealing about the real Ghostbusters with this rib cage action. You open it up and close it. You can fit a Ghostbuster in there. It just adds to that play value, especially with some articulation in the arms and the feet, quote unquote, whatever you would call those. But you could take old Peter Vankman here and encase him in the rib cage, make it so that he's caught, he's captured. And you can also have it to where you'd push up on the figure and it activates the eyes, the mouth, and everything else. And it was just a very cool figure. You can open the rib cage and spill out the Ghostbusters if you wanted to. This one, out of all of these, is still one of my favorite Kenner Real Ghostbusters figures and it probably always will be. Well, I say that in conjunction, of course, with the bug eye ghost. These are the two ghosts that I remember fondly as a child, and then, you know, getting the, the whole gooper ghost later in life, but the eyeball, the purple, the teeth, the eyes, everything about this guy is just classic real Ghostbusters figures. And he really is just a giant eyeball with arms on the underside, again, 1984, with some articulation in the arms, and the best part being the demonic looking face that's sculpted on the back of him. Of course, if you know this guy, his eyeball would bug out. Now, this guy's a little bit old, a little bit hard plastic now going on. You basically hit him on the back, his eyeball would pop out, but it had a nice string attached to it. And again, just to show you the scalage, larger ghosts. They were more fun, they were the best, and they go really nice in your real Ghostbusters collection. So, that is really gonna wrap it up for my look back at the 1986. Kenner, the real Ghostbusters Wave 2, six ghosts, six really fun ghosts, a lot of play features and function to it, things that would last, well, in the sense of having fun with it, but a lot of these have not really withstood the test of time. I love the fact that I can still say I have most of my originals, and up until a few years ago, got the new ones that I was missing after all this time. I highly recommend all of these they are a blast and a half but i'm curious to know what you guys think of course comment below let me know let's talk everything kenner real ghostbusters and i'm gonna leave you guys with that as always drink some great coffee eat some great food but most importantly remember afterlife baby here we come and when we do let me know what you found i'll talk to you guys soon adios